it's nice meeting you again. It's been, it's been a while. We've just been seeing you on the screen. And uh, where have you been? What have you been? What have you been up to? We want to know. Um, thank you, Father. Uh, first of all, let me say, uh, bless me if I have seen. Uh, it's been a few years since my last conversation. <laughs> Let's get out of the way so that I can talk as a, no as a renewed, as a renewed so. Um, you know, at the end of 2019, something happened to the world and everybody went inside and locked themselves up. So I was in Nigeria in early March in 2020, uh, 2020, when um, there was a threat of locking down the airspace in Nigeria and coming back to the UK to my family. And we've stayed cocooned indoors, uh, hibernating from something that has caused a lot of havoc across the world, and taking lives and taking livelihoods. Yeah. Um, so we thank God that we are alive today to, to come out after the dawn, hopefully, from this uh, nightmare that we've had in 2020. So I've been lying low with my family in the UK, trying to protect ourselves, praying to God to save us. And I'm happy that he has saved us when I'm back to Nigeria for the first time after nearly two years. Yeah. So, Yes. <laughs> now, talking about 2019, the last time we met, um, you were making the production for the movie, The Oratory, and um, presumably that would be your not just your first Christian movie, but your first Catholic movie. What 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 prompted you to to go into this project? Um, Make a slight correction. In 20, 2008, I made a film called Quiet Storm. Okay. About a Catholic priest who, wow. who had some issues with his local parish and, uh, and, and all the drama around it. Okay. And he was supposed to be supported by the Ologansis of the Catholic Church. Um, but in the end, he didn't particularly get a lot of support. So this is the second time around in terms of my telling the Catholic story. I was a Catholic, I was supposed to be a priest. <laughs> So I'm, I'm trying to make up for missing my priesthood okay. and, and providing a different kind of service okay. to the to the Christian uh, folks. Yeah. So now I can't preach from the pulpit. I can preach with my camera. Beautiful. Uh, but this is not even preaching. This is what I call practical Christianity. Yeah. So when Father Cyril uh, approached me, Father Cyril Odia approached me with uh, the concept of telling this Don Bosco Africanized story. I, I felt it was, it was a, 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 a very uh, really noble and well thought out initiative. Uh, the story of Don Bosco and how he helped young people to empower them, to keep them livelihood, to teach them trades, to teach them skills, instead of just preaching to them like they do these days in Nigeria. So to look at it from that perspective of, mm. of trying to, to see Christianity in action, I was moved by that. And as a practicing Catholic, I felt the hopes of me to, to add my voice, add my talent, add my time, sometimes add my money to bring that kind of story to life. And by God's grace, we, we, we went around the world without budgets, you know, by the grace of God and by His providence, getting shooting in places that have never been before, inventing St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, and, and, and shot some of the scenes there. It was, it was surreal. Uh, and I, I thank God for using that project to open my eyes to what's available and what's done to help uh, people who will consider to be less privileged, uh, but people who are unlucky to have certain parentage. That's how it is. So Don Bosco and the, the, the Ola Tree story is something that I hold very dear and something that I'm very, very proud to uh, talk about. For those who will be itching eagerly now to to watch the the movie, which will be premiering next week Saturday on the 20th at the Film House, what's the story behind the movie? So, so on a 
broad conceptual level, the oratory is Christianity in action. So it's not about preaching from the pulpit, it is about working with people that need redemption. Whether it is financial redemption, spiritual redemption, all of those things, it is about reaching out to them, getting your hands dirty while trying to reach them. So, in terms of synopsis, the oratory tells the story of an American priest, Father Michael, who gets sent to Lagos um, as a youth missionary. Uh, he gets sent to a parish in Nkoi, the upper part of town, the higher end part of town. But in the spirit of the Bosco, he was more interested in the street children from across the bridge in a place called Makoko. And he attracted the heart of his host parish and the anger and frustration of some of the local criminals who were trapping these young children in criminal servitude. He upset both sides. In a way, he was alone in his quest to try and reach these boys. But he was willing to put himself in the, in the, in the, in the face of danger. He was willing to put everything on the line to achieve his mission, which is to reach these boys and to impress on them, not just by pulpit preaching, but by practical Christianity about the love of God and what somebody like Don Bosco did in the 1800s. And in doing that, a lot of things had to come to a head between himself and the parish and himself and the criminals who are treating these boys as slaves. So there is drama, there are moments that will make you laugh, there are moments that will make you cry, but in all, you come out of it believing more in our humanity, believing more that, you know, if we work together, we can easily make this place a better world. I'm even more than excited to see this movie, I tell you. Now, what impact would this movie have on, on young people, um, especially those poor and abandoned in the society? It, it will tell them that there is hope. It will tell them that somebody cares, which is sometimes all they need. Because they are, they are born into this environment where nothing works, where nobody cares. They are sometimes without parents. They live on the streets, they sleep on the streets, they hustle for their food. To show that somebody cares them to have an independent life of the future, away from crime, away from drugs. So every young person who's out there, who's suffering, encountering such uh, uh, debilitating problems, social problems, it is just a film like this will tell them that there is hope. And that hope is not just somebody coming to preach to you when you have no food in your tummy. It's somebody who's empowering you to catch your own fish instead of giving you fish every day. And, 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 and that's what I touched me with this story. It's not about um, standing and preaching and, and, and preaching to empty stomachs. It's about using what the kids have, giving them uh, 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 a livelihood, giving them hope, giving them reason to love God, giving them reason to serve God. Because, you know, uh, if we share the love that we have, I think it might be enough to go around. Um. I see the I see the passion from the way you speak and that's why taking you back to like the last two questions where you said um, the movie was shot without budget and what was the experience like shooting without the budget and and you have to tell this story and how was it like so when I say we didn't have a budget, so you know when you want to make a film, you set out. I need one million dollars, and you find one million dollars and you go ahead and shoot the film. But we, we managed to gather money piecemeal, ad hoc. So if we needed to fly to Turin to shoot in Turin, we gathered money for the tickets and we went and shot in Turin and we came back. We needed to shoot in America, we got that money, went to America, shot and came back. We needed to shoot in Nigeria. And wherever we went, we were exploiting the availability of, of support from the local Salesian community. So we would sleep in the hostels where we go, they would provide us with food, and we this is our budget considerably. So we had that kind of support. So to shoot in a place like St. Peter's Basilica, we had a cardinal who liked what we were doing, who was very supportive of it, and he gave us the pass to get into the Basilica to shoot. So we've been enjoying a lot of projects. You know, they say when you do good, goodness follows you. Uh, so we've been followed by goodness because we're trying to do something.
something that is that is above us, that is more than us. Uh, and we would have a lot of people support donations by doing things for free, by giving us accommodation, by buying tickets for us. And gradually, before we know it, we finished the film. And, and it turned out to be a rich film, rich in its message, rich in its artistic content, rich in its technical things. We have some stars in it, local stars, and you know, we're very well known in Hollywood, and a few other actors too. We have Americans in it. So, for a, for a no-budget film, I think we have done great. And that's by the grace of God. So what's next for Obi and Melonye? What's on the pipeline? What are we going to see next from all the things he's does he have something off his sleeves that he's not yet telling us no you know uh, unfortunately our industry is not is a continuum so you have to keep going there's no arrival we don't have a last bus stop yeah you know you pass this bus stop there's another bus stop so you keep going so since we've made the horror tree i've also made uh, a film called Padamasi, which looks at the life of ibrahim babangida general who ruled nigeria from 1985 to 1993 that's about to be released. We've had some political issues about it, to be expected. Um, I've also made a film called uh, Black Mail, which I shot in the UK with OCUKJ. It is also going to come out on Amazon very soon. Um, and, and we're working on a new project um, in this window that is a comedy with a bunch of stars out of Hollywood and helping to create new stars too. So we're struggling, we're working hard. And in that time also I've become a lecturer. So I'm a lecturer in filmmaking at the University of Huddersfield, wow. trying to impact um, the Hollywood, the Nollywood School of Filmmaking onto the UK people because it's an acceptance of that school of thought because ordinarily they wouldn't have asked us to come and, and do that if it wasn't for the recognition that Nollywood has become a veritable school of thought in filmmaking. And, and I feel proud that I'm not just representing myself, I'm representing the whole of Nigeria, the whole of Africa to say African filmmakers have been working very hard and they deserve their place in the committee of uh, the film industry, whether it's in the academia or in the practice. What are people to expect at the premiere of the oratory come November 20th? You say November 20th, it's like six years away. It is, it is less than a week. About a week's time. So at the premiere, there will be an opportunity to meet with some of the people that make the film. Some of them are busy at the world. But a bunch of them will be, will be there available to, to bring the red carpet. But before the opportunity is to on the red carpet to mix a bingo, to have it to do, to, to speak to people, to get connected, to network um, with the filmmakers, some of the stars that will be like, coming to. And then to have the opportunity to see the film. The film has been going around the world, it premiered in Dublin uh, to a uh, full house. To standing ovation, it premiered in London to you know, very excellent reviews, it premiered in, uh, in Turin and also in Venice. And let us in the next stop. After they go to Buja, then after Buja, then to Argentina, then to uh, Paris, and it's, it's, it's developed the life of its own. I'm only playing catch up. I'm not here for more. So, we've had it all from Obie Melonye, um, home to the end of November, he says it's just a week to come, um, he'll be there and I'll be there also. So, the two both of us will be there to see you at the premiere. See you.